The question is, how many technologically advanced civilizations are there currently in our galaxy? Frank Drake was the first one to kind of write down an equation to try to break down um, the, this question, the number of technologically advanced civilizations, um, into a number of smaller questions, each of which could possibly be answered. So we're still talking only uh, within our own galaxy, and remember there are 100 billion galaxies in the universe. So it breaks it up into, into things like the average rate of star formation, assuming that these civilizations, you know, had to uh, um, start around uh, around stars uh, and on planets. We have um, the the fraction of those planets. I'm uh, sorry, the, of those of those star systems um, with planets. So, how many of those stars have planets orbiting about them? What fraction? The average number of those of those systems where the planets are habitable. Multiplied by, and we're going to kind of add more terms here, multiplied by, um, let's say, the fraction of those where life starts multiply the, the fraction of those where intelligence arises multiplied by the fraction of those with technology times the average lifetime of a technolog technologically advanced civilization. How, do, how long do they last? So we're going to estimate these terms. Now, one thing you should notice is that the terms go from things we might actually have a pretty good clue about to things that we really don't know, almost in that order. So we'll have confident answers of some of these terms. Some of these terms are going to be pretty speculative, but we have some reasons to believe uh, other ones. So, for instance, the average rate of star formation, there's about 100 billion um, stars in the Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way galaxy has been around for about 10 billion years, so this translates roughly into 10 stars per year. So this is our uh, answer for that one. The fraction with planets, recent evidence uh, suggests, I mean, both the models of star formation, planet formation comes right out. Um, also, many of the systems that we're able to, 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 to see what that, whether, whether they have planets, we have found planets. So this fraction actually ends up being pretty big, so we're going we're gonna to call that one. F the average number of these where, um, where it's habitable, we don't really know because we only have our own solar system to, to, to gauge, and that's about you know, one planet Earth out of about 10 objects. Now, there could have been life on Mars, there could have been life, there could still, there could still be life on Mars, or it could be still life on, um, the, around the moons of Jupiter under their, under their crusty surfaces, um, but this, we'll, we'll leave this as one-tenth, um, and that might change, uh, as we go through, but that's an average value, it might not be horrible. Um, the fraction of those where life uh, occurs is actually, uh, we can actually write that down as, as nearly one. And the reason is the following. The, um, there are two lines of evidence. First of all, uh, the chemical reactions uh, give rise to, um, to the building blocks of life fairly readily. We see organic molecules 
on asteroids, we see um, uh, in experiment, we can generate them very, very easily under the conditions of like an old Earth. Um, also, uh, the, it's found the fossil evidence of life shows that after a fairly short time, uh, uh, a few hundred million years after the Earth became habitable at all, life started. So that was a very short time. So it seems as if the, the chemistry would, would lend itself well. Um, the process of evolution, in terms of you know whether we get intelligence and, and technology, we're going to be pretty optimistic and say one here and one there, essentially saying you know, we have several independent intelligences on our planet. Our, our humans are the highest right now, but you know there's still there. I mean, there's the we're in the primates, but there's dolphins and, and octopi, which could could possibly be uh, there. And we're going to leave this last the average lifetime for a civilization, which we have no idea because we have no idea how long we're going to live. Um, and we're going to leave that. here. Okay. So now what we have is we have, you know, our 10 here cancels with 1 over 10 and everything else is 1. And so the equation actually simplifies down uh, rather nicely. And let's move this, move this out of the way and we'll rewrite the equation uh, with everything having canceled. Essentially that the number of technologically advanced civilizations in the Milky Way right now is equal to the average lifetime of those civilizations. So for example, if this number is a thousand, then we would expect there to be a thousand so if this is a thousand years, if our civilization would last that long, then uh, we would expect there to be about a thousand currently in the Milky Way galaxy. If, if however, this were a million, so we last a million years, that's highly optimistic, then we would expect there to be a million such civilizations. The equation is used both to kind of uh, address the question, but also to, to spark discussion as to what, what are the important variables, what do we expect, uh, and then we can ask also the questions, which I'll discuss in a later video, of uh, how, what are the consequences of having, say, a hundred thousand or a million technologically advanced civilizations within our own galaxy.